So, hey everybody. Um, I just wanted to start this video by just saying a big, huge thank you for all the prayers and support that my family and Gavin received from all of you in this last week since we learned of Gavin's brain tumor and its removal and then, you know, with his recovery now. And just a little update, he's doing as good as can be expected in such circumstance and um, prayers will still be needed, but he is, we visited him yesterday, my sister um, Jocelyn and I, Jocelyn is Gavin's twin sister, and we went up to Albany and we visited him in the hospital and um, it was it was fun to see him, it was special to see him and we had some good conversations and some good laughs as well. But of course, um, it's hard to see someone that you love so much um, experiencing pain and suffering. And then also to see how it's affecting my parents is also um, difficult for me. And of course, we're just trying to support them as best we can. And we are receiving a lot of support from our community, from families, from friends, and of course, from all of you. So we're just deeply grateful. So I've had a lot of kind of thoughts running through my head in this last time. And I was thinking about a book that I recently became aware of, written by John Perkins, who was a civil rights activist, also a good friend of the Bruderhof, and it's called Count It All Joy. There's a line in that book that goes, none of us want to experience suffering, um, but when it comes, it comes as a teacher. And John Perkins says, I haven't always cooperated with the lessons it gives, but the Lord has a way of, of teaching me these lessons. John Perkins himself has been through a lot in his life. You know, he suffered a lot during the civil rights movement, multiple beatings. He's lost two of his children, two of his children have passed away. So he certainly knows what suffering is. I went back to the letter from James in the New Testament to the passage that this, bo this book is based off of and it goes something like, count it all joy when you experience trials of various kinds because those trials will produce steadfastness, something to that effect. Um, by the way, I love the book of James. There's a lot of really good parts in there that I've come back to over and over again, this passage being one of them. So it's a bit embarrassing that I can't remember it exactly. <laughs> so a trial is something that we go through to test us to see if we'll be able to be prepared for the plan or the road that's ahead of us. I don't think we're being tested to see if we can be, if we're going to be stoic or unemotional in the face of hardship. Um, steadfastness means that we remain steadfast and firm in our faith during these times. So this time has kind of is, is, I think is doing that for our family. I think it's teaching us how to be firm and steadfast in our faith. And, you know, often we're being propped up by our fellow believers and our fellow community members and our families. You know, they're helping us remain firm in our faith. And whatever, I also see this time as an opportunity for my faith and my belief to be strengthened and deepened. And also, one thing that I have found as a result of this time and, and what we're going through is a, a deeper connection with other people that are suffering, like um, our, down, our neighbors just down the hall from us. Their mother is um, experiencing cancer and it's been a very difficult time for her and her family. So um, we can, in a way, connect more and sort of there's like an understanding there. Um, and, and many other situations that I can think of. So I'm wishing you the rest of, that the rest of your week is wonderful and I'll see you all at some point soon.